I, I'm Andy Thornton, I'm the Mayor of Parliament for, for Hammersmith. Do you want a microphone, Andy? Um, yeah. At least he got in, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Let him in. Um, I'll try and get this short. I, 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 there probably isn't going to be in the history of the NHS who's had such a reduction of the uh, services within their constituency. Um, your attempt to engage with me today was to prevent me coming into your meeting yes, hey, hey, until uh, I went live on the radio and then you mean, your yes. security manager came out. So I'm standing outside mean. and prevented, as indeed were at least Shame. 20 of my constituents. I'm afraid that doesn't set a very good tone. And it is, and the question, my question is that what I, have, what I haven't heard is anything about my constituents, your patients today. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, To, to, to respond to this. Um, you, you're, you're here, well, you're, where we are sitting now is one of the most deprived areas of London. I've heard nothing about uh, how my constituents who use this hospital are going to receive the same level uh, of emergency care as they will. Inevitably, they will just come uh, to this hospital, they will go to the urgent care centre that's here. You're right on the doorstep of one of the biggest, if not the biggest, developments in London. 24,000 new homes being constructed just over Wormwood Scrubs. 50,000 new homes in the borough over the next 20 years. Uh, at least 10% expansion in population. And I don't see against that how you can justify the, the, the downsizing of, of the emergency services and other services here. Your communications are terrible. Yes. The, the leaflet yes. that is going out yeah, yeah, yeah. That I genuinely believe, I'm not, it's not a point I'm making, I genuinely believe that sending out the leaflet in the first week of August saying that the services here are changing in five weeks' time is going to confuse mis and mislead people in that terrible way. But I also believe, in relation to the Charing Cross proposals, they are very significantly different. They're still not ones I can support, but they are very significantly different from what was proposed 18 months ago. We've waited 18 months for that solution. There has to be a consultation with the public on that. I think that's your legal duty. So in all those respects, and I could go on, but I won't, uh, in all those respects, I just believe you've let down the people who you're yes. supposed to serve. Yes, here, here. Um, and I've, got a, I've got a very high regard for the people who are and many of the services that are operated here. But I have just lost all faith and trust over the last two years in what Imperial yeah. have done. One yes. small addition, just one very specific thing. Uh, to Tra Tracy, you said you used another form of words today when you talked about the A&E services at Charing Cross. In your report, you call them an emergency service appropriate for a local hospital. Now you seem to be saying that's up in the air, depending on what NHS England say. But previously what we've been told, and again this is a lack of clarity, and I'm looking for clarity here, is that the, uh, the difference between the emergency service that were available at Charing Cross and the emergency service available at an urgent care centre is that there will be permanent G GP staffing, whereas they won't necessarily be at an urgent care centre, there will be x-rays available, and there will be some respite beds, which we know there will in your plan for Charing Cross. If that's right, I think we need to know that. And I do think we need to stop referring to this as an as an A an A and E. You're not politicians. So you don't have the to EU. use uh, uh, words which don't mean what they say, as <laughs> politicians often do. And again, in, in, just in the interest of honesty and clarity, you need to say what is going to be on that site. Or if you don't know what's going to be on that site, you shouldn't be going ahead with these decisions today yeah. until mm. you're sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to go on, but I'd like to do all those points. Thank you. I'll try and deal with each of those uh, questions and comments in turn. Uh, the first set of issues was around the Hammersmith Hospital uh, A&E department and the communication around that and the language that's been used around the communication of that. And I think it's a really important point that we do need to, to focus on. So we have taken, uh, as a group, some expert advice about communications and in terms of from who the timing of those communications from accountants in terms of the timing of those communications and it's always a delicate balance between starting communication too early 
and leaving the communication too late. All the advice has been that a six week period of time is about the right time to really saturate the local community to ensure that there is good understanding of the changes that are being made and to ensure that there is a, a good level of understanding in the community about what those changes mean. It's we not had changes, quite a long discussion it's closed. at the OSC about the use of the word change and I think it is worth just focusing on that just for a moment. At our Hammersmith Hospital at the moment we have about 60 patients a day that attend the A&E department and about 80 patients a day that attend the urgent care centre. When we ask our patients do they know whether they were treated in the A&E department or the urgent care centre, most of them can't tell us the difference. So we thought it was incredibly important to use the word changing so that patients know that they can still come here and get urgent care when they need it. How will the they know? Change How will they know? Is that the urgent care centre is now open 24 hours a day, no, seven was. days a week. So for those urgent needs, people know where to come and know that there will be services available. So there has been a lot of thought that has gone into the communication no, and the engagement it. across the sector with our GPs, with our referrals. No. So they do understand how patients should get admitted going forward. In relation to Charing Cross um, and the changes uh, that are proposed at Charing Cross, this is nothing new that we are talking about today in terms of Charing Cross. The last be 60 days. Consultation today, 24. With the community around Charing Cross nice. actually occurred during 2013 and was all part of shaping a healthier future and our clinical plans in relation to Charing Cross are consistent with those plans that have been approved by the Secretary of State after no. an independent uh, review which was back in October of 2013. In terms of the wording and the language around the A&E department Again, I think that's a really important question around what will that emergency service look like going forward. And we do need to take advice from NHS England. The reason that we need to do that is not for a political reason, it's to ensure that we have consistent services and that our ambulance services know where to transfer patients and what sorts of services are available. Shameful. That's why services That's across the country need to be Just consistent and need to use a consistent yeah. terminology, okay. and that is the piece of work that NHS England is doing, and so we're calling it emergency services consistent with the local hospital, and we will continue to engage in that process around what those shape of services should be going forward. Thank you very much. Shame, all lies again. It's disgraceful. Thank you, Chair.